Hey, y'all, we're Big Sugar, and you are watching Live in Limbo. I had a bourbon cocktail about two hours ago, and it wasn't here, unfortunately. But, yeah, that's my favorite part of the day so far. Yeah. And I just had a beer, um, Steiger, I believe. <laughs> Pretty good. Beer festival, right? Uh, the best is yet to come. My favorite fan interaction. Um, my stage name is Mr. Chill. And I once had a fan call out to me, Hey, Mr. Chicken, can I have your autograph? I love it when they call him Mr. Freeze. That's my... <laughs> or Mr. Cool. I'm your biggest fan. Can I get a picture with Mr. Cool? Um, your True biggest, story. Biggest fan, but you have no idea what his name is. Unbelievable. <laughs> what is our favorite Big Sugar song to perform? Wow. Uh, yeah. If you know what it, it would be, uh, it would be our fault if there was one favorite because we wouldn't play any of them if we didn't love it. So we can't pick which which one's the favorite. You know, we if we weren't feeling them on that level, we just wouldn't play them. And every song we don't play every song every night, and sometimes songs don't get put in the set for months, sometimes years at a time, and then they come back with a vengeance. I think that's just because of how we're feeling at the time. So we don't put songs in the set if we're not absolutely feeling it at that moment. So, no, I wouldn't say we have a favorite. What is your favorite artist right now besides yourself? Mr. Chill? Who's that Australian dude? Yeah, there's a, there's a, a singer, for, he's, yeah, singer from Australia. I, I don't want to categorize his music. It's really hard to do anyway. Uh, his name's Marlon T. Williams. I'm a big fan of his. You know what? For me, what makes him unique, and I'm not sure it's for all his fans, but he has no qualms about uh, it. You know, writing in any sort of form. You can tell he's strong. Whenever he writes a song, if it sounds like a, a classic country song, or pop song, or almost like Broadway sort of, you know, American pop jazz song. He does all that stuff really well, and he, that's what you get in a show or on an album. And it seems, and it's more, I should more say that it seems, it's seamless. Like, and that's what I really dig about him. It's not like he's worried about jumping in all these different things. And he's only doing that because he can really deliver. Yeah. Gary, who's, who's your guy right now? Who's your favorite artist? You, my guy's still um, Odell Johnson. There's a couple of guys. I got one, you know. Oh, Esco Levi, and these guys are from Toronto, and I'm yeah. really so kind of blown away by the fact that there's so many new Toronto artists coming up in the reggae scene that are really strong, and it's, those are just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many right now that are coming up, and I'm just so glad that they still look at people like me as um, leaders, you know, who have kind of paved the way for them to actually be who they are right now. We've uh, we recently actually rediscovered an artist who, I mean, the, uh, their music I've always known, uh, but we've only just recently got really into Colin Hay from Men at Work, their lead singer, the original lead singer of Men at Work. Who can it be now? That yeah, guy, okay. his, his solo, uh, his body of work as a solo artist is so different in so many ways from the, uh, the Men at Work stuff, but what a compelling voice and, and what amazing lyrics. Uh, just everything about his presentation. Went and saw him a couple times this past year and we've really been like, rediscovering all, all these things. You know, it's something about an artist who you're familiar with, but things you never would have known uh, about their body of work. So that's, he's been sort of our latest discovery. Yeah, and I think for any of us, the way we discover music is probably different than the average uh, music fan, where we're boots on the ground, you know. Gary has a personal connection. We work with a lot of the same people, like 
like Alex just said, we had people that we worked with in common. So, you know, this is how many degrees of separation between us and maybe our new favorite artist. A lot of times if you do a little checking, you might find out, oh, my guitar tech works for that guy. Or, oh, our sound man, we have the same agent. We use the same photographer. Oh, they played at this venue the week before us. You know, things like that. So it's a small community, actually, globally, of musicians. There's not that many of us at a certain level, you know. So we have ways of finding music that, I mean, ultimately, like everybody else, we go on our iPhone and go, oh, well, look, oh, there it is on uh, Apple Music or Spotify or whatever. Uh, but our connection to it, like I say, can be a lot more hands-on and it's a lot closer to home. I usually listen to jazz, actually. <laughs> I love being a classic jazz artist, you know, like Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, Miles Davis, you know. Even this new guy, Porter Guy, I've been listening to him lately and it's okay. I really, it relaxes me and kind of focus a little bit. Yeah, for me, I mean, it isn't, and it often is music. There's mu certain musical, you know, bookmarks that I, I go to. Sometimes I think, boy, that's a pretty narrow list. I go to that a lot. And also for me, but I also really enjoy, and I find the stress level really dissipates if I, there's, I've usually got a book on the go, uh, be fiction or nonfiction, and um, that, you know, I'm sure I'm saying what millions of people have always said, books take you to another place. And you can, re it can seem like, oh man, I've been reading for two hours. It seems like I just started and I feel a lot better, you know, for it. So I often do that. I rub her neck. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's that, that, you know what? You might think that, but it's, it doesn't work that way. It's counterintuitive, I guess. No, I just... I take away, if I could take away her stress, there's a, you know, there's a byproduct of that, which is I'm so focused on some, on somebody else's feeling good that I, en I end up forgetting my, my stress and it leaves me more relaxed. And then once that's been achieved, then I sing jazz standards. <laughs> and I think he answered for me. <laughs> Most treasured instrument or musical object? Ooh. Gary, you want one? Yeah, I love the bass I play right now. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I just love the bass. I mean, I have a bunch of others, but I keep playing that one. You know, this best bass I ever had. <laughs> Got one? I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's the yeah. I, well, uh, I'm just gonna throw. The, it's kind of like what Gary's talking about. Um, I played. I played trumpet in high school. It's my first musical instrument, and uh, at that point in my life, I'd really sucked at playing the keyboards. And I never thought a musical instrument was in my future. Didn't stick with it because I thought it was really square. So I moved on to harmonic and tenor saxophone. Anyway, in the last year I'm back just not with our band but I'm playing the trumpet at home and you know doing scales and practicing and I forgot how much being my first instrument that I was actually okay at how much I loved it so I oftentimes when we're on the road the last three or four days I can't wait to get home and grab that thing and just start playing again uh, well I recently lost uh, an early 20th century Gibson banjo, really rare. It's a six string banjo instrument, which makes it even more rare. Uh, if anyone's seen it. And if anyone's seen it, <laughs> bigsugar.com, please uh, let us know. Uh, but you know, losing it in a way also gave me uh, an approach to my instruments as Really, they're just a conduit for me to express myself musically. I have so many guitars, basses, keyboards, even drums. I have so many musical instruments. And really, at the end of the day, if I'm not sitting at that instrument and expressing something to you, it's sort of an, it's an inanimate object, and they're beautiful. And, and I appreciate their beauty, and, and I love owning them. 
but they have just taken on, I don't know, something about it. They take on less importance uh, if you take the human element away from them. Because I think when I'm dead and gone, those instruments might come in handy for somebody, but they'll never speak the same way. They'll never do the same thing. So I don't know, I just de-emphasized that aspect of my life a little bit recently, I think. What was our favorite accomplishment? Just that we, I think just that we made it this far. Just that we made it here. We're here today. It seems like a, a blessed day, you know? We look, look at each other and do we get to get up on, in a couple of hours and, and play this music that we've crafted over decades together and people still love it we're still in demand and we make people happy that to me is is just a daily reminder of of what a what a great path we've chosen you know I, I, I certainly more I think it has more resonance than any sing, single uh, oh, well, you played with the Rolling Stones, or you played with ZZ Top, or you played with yeah, this big venue or this big festival. or All those things look really important on the outside, but on the inside, just today is, today is a gift, you know?